Hey everybody, it's Timmy Broken Dice, bringing you a quick little channel update on my uh, solo wargaming project of uh, Rome and Iberia. Uh, this is turn three of the Back to Iberia campaign. Uh, so let's uh, look at these orders that have been uh, completed at this point in time. The Romans have the first turn, so their orders have been given. And uh, as you can tell, uh, the Romans were quite successful on the flanks. We'll look at the other flank here in just a second, but this one right here was quite successful. The local commander uh, of these uh, Iberian troops that are allied to the Romans rode up, gave a follow me command, which was passed gloriously. And this unit is now charging that unit of open order uh, Ketradi in front of them, which obviously are not going to try to stand against that. I rolled a, an evade order, which they promptly failed. And as you can see, the red markers show the complete distance that this unit of Ketrate led by that Roman prefect can uh, travel. That unit of Iberian uh, Ketrate will probably be destroyed. They are will they will be destroyed because they can't stand, and then their flea move did not get them out of the way. So that will take care of all the action down on this side of the table. Although now that I'm looking at it, something I might have just forgotten was that the well, they were, uh, supporting the, uh, light cavalry. I was thinking about the cavalry. Uh, they would have to disengage from their support and then try to move and engage the cavalry to their front, the enemy cavalry that is, and, um, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I think that's a little bit, I should have thought about this a little bit more, but no, I'm going to wait. Uh, they can uh, disengage from that unit and move, but I don't think they should be able to declare the charge because they have an intervening unit. A unit they can move through, but... Hmm. I just... Uh, I think I will move them up through the uh, the uh, light cavalry, and uh, let's come back to that and hold. Let's hold this thought for just a second. Okay, let's just uh, talk about what I decided to do here. I looked it up, and uh, so I decided to disengage that cavalry from their support position and move them forward. Uh, through the uh, light cavalry, they passed their disorder test. And so um, they moved up as far as they could without coming into contact with the Iberian medium cavalry. The Roman uh, allied uh, Scutari went right through the uh, light open order infantry of the Ketrate. And at the end, so they just turned to face due to... Uh, Oh, gosh. Um, you know, proximity. God, I, sorry about that. I had proximity rule. Okay. And then I went ahead and rolled for the combat between the two other light infantry units, and it was a drawn combat. So that just really pretty much ends everything on this flank of the uh, battle. And so let's go ahead and we'll talk about the orders in the center. And then we'll go down and look at the total mess that's going to happen here on the uh, Iberian left. All right, let's move this camera. So uh, in the Roman center, the um, Romans failed to move. They failed their order. Uh, I think at this, if they survive this next turn fairly intact, um, I think the uh, army general needs to step in and take over command of this uh, division right here because this th this cat's just not getting it done. So uh, yeah, we'll be doing some shooting here 
pretty pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to move the uh, camera down to the Roman right so we can get all that movement in and then we can do all of our shooting at once and then all of our our combats and then we'll talk about the results. Okay, so here we are on the uh, Roman right. So their division commander issued a division order to advance and attack the Iberians to charge to the front, as it were. Now, obviously, the slingers aren't going to do that, but uh, the cavalry and the two units of uh, legionnaires are going to move forward. Uh, now, we'll, we're going to be caught with the same problems for the Iberians on this flank because the Light Infantry Catrati, they're in open order. The Skirmishers are definitely in open order. So each one of them are going to have to roll to evade. And you can see by the red arrows that uh, they passed their order again by three. And so this whole Roman division is going to be right mixed up in this real quick. Um, we'll have to see how far these uh, uh, units uh, can flee. And then we'll uh, move our Romans and we'll be right back here and I'll, let's, uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, let's uh, take a look at what happened here. Uh, the light infantry for the Iberians was able to go far enough because of the combat that's going to ensue to allow them to evade the Romans. I moved the uh, skirmishers, uh, just the regular javelin guys, through the Iberians, which they, they can do their own um, scutari, and they moved into a supporting position. Um, the other light infantry, they, they evaded far enough back to where they're, they're out of it for this time, but you know, they're, they're all right. They'll be able to return to the fight next time. Um, but that, uh, that lead Iberian, I just, all the Roman units made it, um, into this combat. Um, so yeah, the, the legion, the uh, legion, the legionary unit here is actually in the combat itself. This cavalry is in support. The slingers are in support. And this other unit of uh, legionnaires is in support. So, uh, yeah, this isn't going very good for my Iberians. On both flanks, the Romans surged forth really far. And the um, center stayed put, which... I don't know. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It's very interesting. Uh, so, um, let's do the shooting that's going to take place in the center because the Romans didn't move and their their infantry their skirmishers are out there. So let's go ahead and uh, throw some slings and javelins, and uh, we'll get we'll work through that and let's uh, see how that turns out. Okay, the shooting in the center. Uh, quite eventful for the Romans, actually. The Slingers uh, did some stellar work. They did a point of damage to uh, each of these uh, units right here. I rolled a five for each. And then, down on this end, rolled two fives for this unit firing here. And they did two points of damage on that unit. But no sixes. Just five. So nobody had the test. Um, kind of that uh, back and forth sort of thing with the with the uh, light infantry. But that's all the shooting. So now we're going to get in. Oh, no, 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 no. Well. Yeah, I, I don't think they the this can shoot because I it was it was part of a division order. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. I'm not going to allow it to shoot. Because it was part of a division order. Okay, so, <clears throat> let's just uh, go down here on the Roman right, uh, where they have de are delivering overwhelming force against the Iberians. And uh, 
if they stay true to form, this this, this fight here on the Roman right should uh, be over fairly quickly. So let's uh, roll some dice and see how that turns out. Okay, well, this was interesting. Let me straighten that camera out just a little bit. Okay, the combat. Wow. Uh, oh, grab this. A lot went on. Uh, the Romans, uh, they so they the Roman unit in in contact had seven, hitting on threes. They this unit behind added three. This unit of skir skirmishers added two, and the cavalry added three. And in all that, the Romans were able to do six points of damage to the. Uh, Iberian and their supports. I oh wait a minute, I, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's wrong. This is four. Uh, there's the number four. The white dice show exactly what they took this turn. Now, again, I always give the lion's share of the damage to the unit that is in combat, and then try to divvy up the, the uh, like like since they did six, two thirds would go to the to the combat unit. And one third would go to the supporting unit, and I do that in um, in relationship to how many units are fighting in the combat against them. Okay, so that's how I kind of judge who gets the lion's share of the uh, the damage. Now, I rolled an eleven for the break test because the Okay, well, wait, I've got that. Fighting back, the um, Iberians were able to do three points of damage. So they only lost the combat by three. I roll an 11, which is an eight, which means they hold their ground without penalty. That's a big deal. That is a very, very big deal. Because now, in the Iberian turn, these other units can come in and support and engage in the combat. Um, the, the the commander can can uh, uh, come in. So this is going to be a very very interesting Iberian turn because I really thought this was going to blow through this little group of Iberians. But you can never tell when you roll the dice how it's all going to play out. Really, the Romans, uh, their attack rolls were, were, were abysmal. Um, so even that, they were able to do six points of damage. But still, with the, with the uh, leadership roll, man, I was I was just totally totally thrown by that, and we have to remember that this uh, unit of Iberian medium cavalry that that blundered off the table in turn two, if they can pass an order to come on to the table, wow, that that could turn this whole thing on its head. Plus. The, the the units here that have yet to get involved in the combat. So this this could turn into a stalemate, but it depends on this unit right here. Can they hold? If they become shaken next turn, it'll be, it, it, it could be rough. But by then, all these other units are, net, are going to be engaged in combat. So it's going to be an interesting interesting um, turn of events. The tactical question for the Iberian part of turn three. Do I move these guys into a supporting position? Moving these guys out to support on the flanks and move these guys into combat? Or do I move everyone into a supporting position? I don't know. I just... <laughs> Because these small units of uh, of Catrate, they can they can form up and they can they can their light infantry they can they can form into battle line. Um, so that will take some thinking. 
I'll have to, uh, I wouldn't want to overthink it and, and skew my decision making and my math skills. My, my personal, the way I would personally play this is that I would charge in with the smaller units to engage these other supporting units of the Romans. Um, so they can't lend their support to the one combat unit and then bring these other units up to, com to um, uh, support the uh, Scutari. Here, you bring this unit up, move these guys to the, to the flanks to support. That could be, uh, could be what we do. That's, the way, that's tactically the way I would do it. So, so as to lessen the support and kind of feather this combat out. But then you have to ask myself, the, the, the tactical question is, if I feather it all out, unit on unit, the Roman army is better. Should I just group everything up like the Romans have done into this big mass combat and just feed more bodies in? I think I'm going to roll a dice for it, and I'm going to pick whatever I, I'm going to do whatever I roll. It's going to be high number. I'll just support everybody. It's everybody moves into a position to support um, the ones that can, because you can only support with three. So it would be like one of the lights, this unit, and these guys, where this unit may have to... Uh, it would have to do something else. Ah, gosh, that, that's interesting. That's interesting what we might have to do. So, uh, and initiative orders all the way around, so I don't have to worry about failed orders. The only order he needs to give is for the off-table cavalry unit. And if that comes on, it, 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 might, it might turn this whole thing on its head. All right? So I'm going to... Um, Pause it. I'm going to move the camera down to the Iberian um, right division. I'm going to start there, and we'll finish up turn three with this down here, because I think it'll be the far more interesting. So let me pause this. Okay, I had to take a little second and look in the book. I couldn't find where... Uh, Shaken units can't use their initiative or receive orders. I know disordered units can't, but shaken units, I read through the part that specifically talks about shaken units, and it doesn't say that the shaken units uh, can't uh, use their initiative or um, receive orders. I find that puzzling, unless I've missed it. So, uh, what we're going to do, obviously, they're close enough. They're going to charge in there on their own initiative. But obviously, being shaken, there there's so many things that they're going to be pretty bad at anyway. So we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so we'll run that up in there. Okay, now next, let's move over here to our wayward unit and our commander over here. We're going to try to do a follow me order and have him um, charge that unit of Scutari straight forward into those uh, Roman legionnaires. So let's get over here and take a look at this. Okay, so now let's take a look at this commander here. Oh, stepped on the camera. Okay, this commander, he's going to move over. He's going to issue a follow me order to this unit of Scutari to charge that unit of Legionnaires. Okay. So they passed by three. Yikes. So they will definitely be able to make it. Now, we have open order. Oh, sorry. Hit the camera again. Open order unit. Skirmishers. Skirmish, so right here... They'll be able to go through these guys and reach them because they're in open order. So you can pass through your open order troops. 
And since they made it by three, so they will definitely reach. And that will be all for this uh, division here. And uh, we'll fight some combats and see how this turns out. This, uh, boy, this is turning into something really weird. All right, let's uh, move some guys and then we'll roll some dice for combat. Okay, let's talk about what's going on here on the right hands uh, of the uh, Iberian uh, army and the left of the Romans. Uh, this unit up here, I had mistakenly taken this disorder marker off. It shouldn't come off until the end of the Roman phase. And so I just put that back on there. Just So I'll, I'll take that off here. Uh, just letting everybody know that, that that's another reason why that unit did not move. Um, this two units, they, they countercharged each other. I thought, why not? I mean, this unit's going to be suffering from a lot of uh, problems anyway because of their shaking, but it didn't turn out that way. Um, the Iberians on the Roman side, they actually um, drew the combat they are a small unit compared to a standard size unit, but they drew the combat, forced this unit to test because they are shaken. I rolled an 11, <laughs> and so they stay right where they are. Okay, so let's move a further down here a little bit, because the, the center is just turned into a nightmare for the Iberians. All right, let's move this camera. All right, first off, um, this is the Iberian right commander. You know, basically everything to the right. But because that one unit here had blundered last turn, they were over here. So he moved up, gave a, a uh, follow me order. They passed and they charged the Roman legionnaires to their front. All well and good. So then we moved to the Iberian, I mean, the Iberian center and which we wanted to clear all these uh, skirmishers out of the way. So my opened order units charged his um, skirmishers right here. Uh, since they have long range attacks, they can uh, shoot. They did no damage. Um, so they're just going to slug it out right there. And this, this unit here, I used its end. Because, the way I did it, it's kind of like in a storyline in my head, is this, as this unit charged through them to get at the Romans, they basically drew them guys in with them. They would have just said, hey, we're going with those guys. And so they, they were in support. Uh, so basically, it, it, it turned into another... Slugfest, the Iberians, even though they charged, they did lose the combat by one. But I, again, I rolled like a 12 and they are holding their ground as it is. So, um, we have to do these combats here. But the most important part <laughs> of what happened to the center is this. Let me move the camera. Now, the whole idea of this game for me was I really wanted to use this boar's head formation and get it into combat and see if it could really chomp on some of these Romans. It's just not going to happen. You wouldn't believe it. I blundered twice with this, with the general's unit. I, I rolled once, it blundered. I used his re-roll, his one-time-per-game re-roll and blundered again but they just shifted to the right but that is going to cause all kinds of issues in the next turn ah yay i don't know what's going on here it's just craziness with the way these dice are rolling the rolls are so high i'm rolling 11s and 12s for orders and 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 for uh break results and i'm rolling uh, oh well, 
Oh, well. But so, in their blunder, they move to the right. One moves six inches. So, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty crazy, if you ask me. That's some, that's some crazy. So, what I thought was, okay, now this, this, this may be this, uh, uh, a, a gathering of forces here in the middle for the Iberians to charge into the Romans. Not going to happen now. This this Iberian unit from the from the right division is now out there in the air with no help coming. <sighs> Gosh, this is the way I normally play when I got an opponent across from me. <laughs> this is horrible. Okay. So now let's move the camera down to the Iberian left and uh, let's roll some combats there. Oh, I got to roll these combats and we'll come back and look at that. And then we'll go to the Iberian left and we'll look at those combats. All righty, we're back. Oh, let's move this camera just up just a little bit. All right, we've got... Uh, one unit of the slingers was broken and they ran off the table. Uh, this unit of slingers is holding its own. Uh, now we need to move down to the left. And we'll talk about the combat. And then I'll roll for the uh, requisite break tests. <laughs> okay, down here on the left. Let's talk about the orders. Like I said, there were several different ways I wanted to go about it. Uh, so I decided to roll a dice, either kind of splitting things up and charging different units, or kind of just feeding everything into a massed combat. Again, you can only be supported by three units. So this unit out in the air, it had to charge this unit, so it could no longer give its attacks in support. And so I just moved them back an inch because the, uh, they were being attacked, and that was a drawn combat there, which I thought was as good as it could get for that small unit of Catrate charging the, uh, the Romans. And they must have caught them snapping at the time. So in the Iberian phase, we did some damage. You can see by the white dice in the big combat, we did three, five, seven points of damage. Um, again, I always spread the lion's share out to the unit that's in combat. And then the rest are just randomly distributed to whoever else happens to be in, in, in the combat. Uh, yeah, but we did seven points of damage to them. They turned around, and as you can see from this, they did two, six, eight points of damage, and we and the Iberians have lost this combat by one. Um, yeah. So now we need to roll for some break tests now. What happened here, they did enough wounds to certain units to cause them to become shaken. That's This is the disturbing part of this. This unit is now shaken, and this unit is shaken. So regardless if it would have been even a drawn or if the Iberians had won, them becoming shaken, they have to test anyway. So we're going to test. This could turn into quite the disaster, although... It, I really think that was their, their best shot was to just try to remove one unit from supporting the major con combat, try to overwhelm and return the other way, but it just didn't work out. They fell a little short. The rolls weren't that great. So uh, let me roll here for their uh, break tests and we'll come back and we'll talk about that. Okay, so we rolled the dice, and uh, they didn't break. I rolled a nine for the combat, and so uh, they held their ground in good order. So that's, 
That was as good as they could hope for. Oh, yeah, and one note in the orders phase for the Iberians. That cavalry unit did not come on the table. I rolled a blunder. Believe it or not, I rolled a blunder for the even the off-table unit. God, horrible, horrible dice rolling for my Iberians. I uh, don't know what's going to happen next. Really don't. It's um, turn four should uh, see this baby put to bed. Although, I really thought the, the Iberians would have crumbled much quicker on this left. But I really thought on the right we had a shot. But when that one unit blundered and moved toward the center and messed up the entire uh, battle line for the Iberians, it's, it's, it's just turned into these little sideshow fights and um, with the Roman turn coming up now it's it's going to really really unless they rule I rule really poorly for them it's going to be horrible yeah I think it's just going to be horrible so that brings us to the end of turn three turn four will be coming up uh, fairly shortly this week I want to try to get this thing wrapped up get into some new stuff, new projects. Um, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's been kind of interesting. I'm going to take some uh, uh, pictures and they'll be put at the end of the video and then we'll uh, come back for turn four. I uh, hope you like this kind of stuff. This is kind of fun. Helps me uh, stay sharp on the rules, makes me look back through the book so I don't just assume I know everything. Um, I think I'm going to look back in the old rule book under, sh uh, shaken units and see about orders and what they can and can't do. Uh, cause I read through that section twice and it didn't say that they can't take orders. So, uh, but there are, but they're, they're heavily penalized by being shaken, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to research. And if I find something before I post the video, I'll post a disclaimer at the end of this video and let you know of what I find out. Okay. Uh, well, that's it. Give us a thumbs up, like, share, do all that kind of silly, crazy stuff. Um, leave a comment down below. Really helps me out. Let me, let me know what you think about the way I do it. Uh, so I can improve. All right. So that's the end of this. Everybody stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time.